Okay, folks, if we could, uh, if we could make a start. Um, can, I, um, can I welcome all members of the public and members to the January meeting of the, the uh, Combined Authority? Um, I'd like to start by um, giving a particularly warm welcome to Councillor David Wesley, leader of uh, West Lancashire Council. David, um, this is your first meeting um, as associate member of the, of the Liverpool City Region Combined Authority. You're very welcome. I'm delighted you're here, and I, I really hope you enjoy your first meeting. And I'm looking forward to working with West Lancashire. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, uh, uh, welcome to David. Um, before moving into the detail of the meeting, um, there are a number of, of housekeeping points that I, I need to mention as, as usual. Um, can I remind everybody, please, to um, uh, either switch off your mobile phones or turn them on to silent for the duration of the, the meeting, um, and to ensure that everybody in the chamber can, uh, can hear the debate, can I please ask members and those presenting reports to use uh, the microphones. I'd be really grateful if, if you could do that. Uh, and then finally, <clears throat> as ever, the meeting will be filmed by officers from the uh, Combined Authority and will be available on the Mosey Council YouTube channel later today. So just to remind you of that. So those are the um, <clears throat> preliminary remarks. Um, item, item one on the agenda is, is apologies. <coughs> I think we have we have a couple of apologies. Yes, Chair, Councillor Grimwald and Mayor Anderson have apologised. Okay, can we accept those apologies? Yes, agreed. Thank you very much. Uh, item two is uh, declarations of, of interest. Um, can I can I ask if any members wish to declare uh, whether any interests have been received? Anybody wish to declare any interest? No? Okay, thank you. Um, item three uh, on the agenda is the, the minutes of the, the last meeting of the Combined Authority held on the 21st of November, pages one to eight on your agenda. Um, can I ask, are these approved as a correct record of the meeting? They agreed? Thank you very much. Okay, on to uh, item four, which is Highways Maintenance Funding, this is our first substantive report, uh, and I'm going to ask Frank Rogers to speak to this. Frank. Thank you, Chair. Um, highways Maintenance Funding, this report sets out proposals for the reallocating of Highways Maintenance Capital Funds for financial year 2015-16 to the six districts of the Liverpool City Region. Um, the funding has been awarded to the combined authority by the Department of Transport as the strategic body for the Liverpool City Region. The uh, report also seeks delegated approval to allow the head of the public service to oversee and to submit on behalf of the City Region a highway maintenance challenge fund bid ahead of the fund de bid deadline on the 9th of February. This will be done in consultation with the Chair of the Combined Authority, the Chair of the Merge Travel Committee and the Treasurer of the Authority. Some background for the support of the group. Mem members will be aware that local transport authorities have traditionally received two principal sources of formula-based um, capital funding from government to improve local transport um, facilities. They're namely the Integrated Transport Block, or ITB, and Highway Maintenance Block. Integrated Transport Block bids are typically used for smaller sized capital projects such as highway improvements and walking cycling improvements. Combined authority considered the report at its meeting on the 21st of November relating to the reallocation of the ITB funding block. Um, and subsequently on the 23rd of December, the DFT announced the levels of highways maintenance funding being made available to local transport authorities from April 2015 onwards. Um, funds have been confirmed for the three year period from 1516 through to 1718, and there are details within the report. The city regions confirmed that indic indicative allegations um, from 1560 to 2021 are shown at 3.6. Um, whilst these indicative allegations have been set out by DFT for each of the city regions, the combined of city regions district, sorry, the combined authority protocol on the creation of the CA did give a commitment. 
commitments in relation to government and block funds, and that was that the combined authority will receive and manage the single city region wide ITV and highways maintenance fund allocation from 1560 onwards and be responsible for the prioritisation and allocation of that funding. So, as such, the funding is coming into the combined authority as a single block, recognising that the combined authority is the coordinating body for transport for the city region. However, in the view, the view of the DFT's latest announcement, it is recommended that the funding for 1560 is redistributed back to the six local highways authorities in line with the DFT's indicative allocations as detailed in the report, and that rather than looking to develop any agreed local criteria, they go as previously indicated. So that, that's defined in, in 3.9. That will allow the CA to consider its position on any alternative approaches to reallocation of funding post-1560, but nothing will be done without any recommendations to come back to the CA for consideration. The, the maintenance form, as I've said, takes the form of capital funding for local authorities. It's the maintenance, maintenance of public highway and associated structures, but it's not specifically ring fenced. And that funding there will enable each of the local authorities to develop their respective capital programs which within their budget for this year. So in conclusion, the report sets up the proposals for reallocation. It is as per the DFT proposals and the report also seeks delegated approval for heavy paid service to publicly and submit the highways maintenance challenge one bid on behalf of the Coast City region. Happy to take any questions that may arise. Okay, Frank, thank you very much for that uh, uh, presentation on the report. Um, members, any anybody got any questions, comments, observations? Uh, are we content with the recommendations? Is that agreed? Okay, thank you very much. That's great. Okay, um, <laughs> on to item five, roads <coughs> investment strategy funding announcements. And uh, I mean, one of the... One of the really positive uh, developments over the last few few months has been clearly our, our growth deal um, that we were successful in negotiating with government and, and a package of, of measures there. Um, and clearly, um, you know, we are in the process of uh, uh, into delivery mode in a number of those schemes. And we've got some other scheme announcements that have come forward since the last combined authority meeting in November. So I think Mike, Mike, uh, you're just going to take us through uh, a summary of all of those schemes. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, members will be aware that when we submitted the growth deal in um, uh, spring of last year, we were seeking to evolve funding to the city region for the combined authority and LEP to invest in major transport schemes and skills capital schemes. And the outcome of that process is on the, uh, on the agenda today. But we also lobbied government to using this mechanism funding from national resources. So just as a reminder for members, what we were attempting to do in the growth plan was improve our economic performance. So we concentrated on this 8.2 billion pound economic gap that the city region suffers from on the national average. And we mapped that through into the shortage of businesses and then the shortage of jobs in the economy. That has a direct impact on every person in the city region. Every person in the city region is 1,700 pounds less well off on average than the national average. The city region has been performing well, our economy has been improving, so these are the statistics we submitted when we put the submission in. ONS did revise their numbers <coughs> late last year, so these need to be changed. But we made the point to government, our economy is performing well and it's worth the investment. And we said that our strategy would be delivered by five key projects. So they were Liverpool City Centre as an employment hub for the whole of the city region. The Liverpool City Region Freight and Logistics Hub. So this is the collection of assets within the Liverpool City Region and beyond, including West Lancashire, where the infrastructure we have, the road and rail infrastructure, means that the changing nature of the freight industry will invest here. LCR2 Energy was the ambition to be self-sufficient in energy within 20 years. And a key project for us was access to the port of Liverpool. We also talked about creating an investment fund and beginning to do work on how that would be structured now. We then focused on the enabling elements. We need to get business control, <coughs> the skills system, the innovation system, and that place our property off the right as well. In December, 
and the Austin Statement, the government released its road investment strategy. So this is highway vacancy, national funding to be invested over the next five years. And many of those schemes contribute to our freight and logistics hub project. So just to go back again, the, the nature of the logistics industry is changing. On the agenda today is a new freight and logistics strategy for the city region. We know that a significant amount of imports into the UK come in through southern ports, but are then processed in the north of England, which makes no sense in the national economy. So significant investment in our city region and market dynamics are creating jobs here. We also have a very significant set of assets. The map shows the road, the rail, and the canal, and the river itself. These are key assets that can't be replicated anywhere else. And our logic in submitting the growth deal was to identify a series of schemes that would make the movements of goods more, more efficient. That is the slide presented to ministers in February. Every single scheme down there now is potentially fundable from the resources we've obtained devolved to the city region. These are the schemes that we're asking the highways agency to fund when we lobbied in March. And every single scheme on this map is now being committed to by the highways agency. So it's a really successful outcome from the work we did earlier, in the year, earlier last year. We estimate from two sources. First of all, the LEPS own work, working with Oxford Economics, on the economic potential of all of the key sites, the potential logistics sites. That could create up to around 20,000 jobs. Coming from the opposite direction, a piece of work we, we commissioned from MAA Haywards, an international consultancy, looks at the market demand and estimated that there was 30,000 jobs would be created in the industry. So we're fairly confident that by enabling <coughs> developments, we can create more jobs in our economy. So these are the schemes. So today, the combined authority will financially approve the Nosley Expressway, Newton and Willows, and access to Nosley industrial power schemes. They will hit the ground in the new financial year. The other schemes on the uh, left-hand column are schemes for which government has committed funding. And the ones on the right-hand column are where we are undertaking the business cases and there is resources to be devolved to the city region to fund those schemes. On top of these are the city centre schemes that were funded, not concentrated on those in this presentation. There's over 50 million pounds of transport funding for the city centre as well. So in total, the city region is receiving around 180 million of devolved transport funding, where the LEP will make a strategic decision and the combined authority will make a financial decision. On top of that, the announcements in the autumn statement are an additional up to, because these, are, these schemes have to be still properly developed, up to 700 million pounds for further investment and in total the growth deal now could have secured over 900 million pounds of investment in the city region, which is a very positive message. Over half of all the highways agency funding for the next five years in the northwest of England will be spent on our city region area. So it's a hugely positive message for us to be conveying. More than happy, Chair, to take any questions. Okay, thanks, Mike, uh, for that very positive report. Um, Questions, members? Ronnie. Not a question, Chair, not an observation. Um, some of the statistics on the screen are really interesting. Uh, and some of them have known about for a long time, but never had the ability to do much about it. Uh, the one interesting one that might go up on the screen was the 90% of imports coming through into the south of the country. Now that's nothing new to us because that started to happen quite early on when we first joined the common markets and then further on into supplementary into Europe. Um, and business was in the right minds to not go to send um, imports which could take three to five days longer by coming into the southern ports uh, than it is the northern ports. Hopefully, uh, we are now starting to address uh, that anomaly, uh, particularly as the combined authority for the process region grows and grows in strength, uh, and some of the uh, infrastructure. 
transport might be a question for you specifically because there's more to our plan than transport and this round deliberately was focused on transport. Can you just enlighten us on uh, what might follow the next round of growth deals, particularly around the knowledge economy and science where I know we have been very active just to counterbalance this transport initiative? As, as members will be aware, um, we were tactical in our approach to the local growth process. Um, Although we were told that government was creating a single pot approach from which it could differ any type of resource, we recognised very early on that the majority of the resource in the pot, like the transport funding or skills capital funding, which is what we lobbied for to get our maximum share. Our hope would be that government creates a single pot going forward and we think that then we would be able to submit things like the innovation plan, which is due to come to the combined authority uh, in, in the next in, in opening meetings into government to secure funding in our innovation infrastructure. We are very hopeful that within the next week or two, um, growth deal top-ups may be announced, and we are hopeful that that will be more flexible than what we perceive today, so it will give the scope to invest in land and property schemes, uh, businesses that are looking to, to expand. So the, the disruption downstairs today as people enter is because of a new group investor that is moving into this building. Um, they were supported by a funding pot we secure from regional growth fund and we hope to extend that funding pot going forward. So hopefully we'll get more flexibility in how we can invest local growth funds going forward. That, that's the key thing for the city we need to focus on. And Chair, I might just say, the Innovation Board itself has 12 major schemes in the science affected areas there to bring forward like, in the next round of growth, growth, growth deal bids. It, it does. It, there are 12 schemes being developed by partners currently for um, uh, potential bids into governments and also for investment from the European programme. They include DARES, for example, uh, political knowledge course and various other sites. So we are doing the development work to have bids ready to submit to governments because that's been one of our challenges to date is actually as the resources become available in the centre, do we have the schemes ready to go? That's something we, we will begin to focus on more and more. Okay, thanks for that. <clears throat> one, one sort of final question for me, or not one point really, Mike. Um, it's fantastic, I think, the uh, positive um, you know, uh, schemes that we've, we've uh, managed to negotiate, which is really good news for the city region. Uh, I think the, the big challenge now is delivery. Um, so just, just um, kind of briefly outline for us, um, you know, what arrangements are in place to make sure now we've got this fantastic programme, we can deliver them on time to budget. Um, the members will be aware that the uh, resources are deposited in the city region in the next financial year, and that will give us some scope to, to um, manage within that budget, put some capacity in place to make sure they deliver properly. Um, the combined authority gave a mandate to, to an officer group to actually scope out what that capacity might be at an earlier meeting and that work's been underway. Uh, we have a reporting structure through the head of pay service of the CA, who, uh, the CA being the ultimate risk holder for this building. So we, we put that group together to start to map the capacity required and ensure we've got the delivery in place. 
we are highly commended by the government by, as a result of the, the work we've done on bringing schemes forward through processes. So today, the combined authority will receive uh, a paper on the first three schemes for delivery in the next financial year. Many other areas will not be ready to go on the 1st of April. The Liverpool City Region will because we've actually planned ahead and sequenced the work that needed to be done. So we're, we're, uh, the government side, we're green rated and ahead of schedule. So we're getting there with the delivery structures. The challenge will be that uh, as more and more resources might get devolved via this process, do we have the structures and the capacity in place to make a full range of funding? Okay, uh, any other questions or comments from members? No? Okay, so can I ask, uh, are we, con uh, are we, I think we just received that report from Mike, and uh, I'd just like to say a big thank you to Mike and uh, the whole team uh, for the fantastic <coughs> kind of outcomes that we've seen from that process, so well done, Mike. Okay? Right, <coughs> right moving, moving swiftly on, um, item six is uh, year one, growth deal schemes. So this report looks um, a seamless transitioning from the last item. This report looks at the business cases for three growth deal schemes, as Mike has uh, mentioned, to be started in 2015-16. And I think Liam Le Robinson, Liam, you want to take us through this, please? Yeah, thanks, Chair. Uh, and as you just mentioned, it moves on very nicely from Mike's previous presentation, because effectively the report is just asking for the Wild Authority to approve business cases for three of the schemes that want to crack on with those being the A5300, um, the improvements to those in the industrial park and also the development of an interchange facility at Newport Willows. I think the important point to make is when you look at uh, the cost benefit ratios, uh, which you can see on page 18, they are all very high. But the transport guidance is that anything which delivers a BCR of over two is seen as exceptional value. And when you look at the A5300 being at 6.9, um, KIP being 2.9, and Nuclear Willows being 3.37. The BCR really does speak for itself. The report also mentions about uh, further schemes in the pipeline that are going to be developed and the business cases that will be coming back to you in the near future. But effectively, it's asking your approval to accept the business cases so that we can proceed with the projects and release the funding accordingly. We're happy to take any questions that might arise. Thank you, uh, Liam. Um, <coughs> comments, questions, members? Robert? Just make a comment, really, Chair. Thank you. I mean, I believe we've done it very specifically there, and those three schemes will go and will happen. I, I think this report, really, um, underlying it, is a very complex process indeed. It's just been emphasised. It's just the responsibility and the work that's gone into it between partners. Prioritisation, the bidding process, the business case, and making it very To achieve this principle, <coughs> ideology working to this morning, how that actually a number of uh, different teams and different bodies within the city working together. And we know we have our challenges from time to time, but there's so many occasions where we work very, very effectively. And this is one to deliver those three schemes that we have done in a very complex and challenging funding environment. The very critical concern. Uh, I just want, 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 want to make that point. Getting those schemes away in this financial year is critical. Each of those, as Mike touched upon, are directly job creating. And again, it's not an exercise about transport per se, it's the economic benefit beyond it. Just those two points, Chair. Okay, thanks, Robert. Um, any other questions? Any other comments? If not, uh, can I just add my um, support to what Robert said? I think this is a really good outcome that we've got these three schemes away so so promptly and, and uh, got through all the, um, the process bits. Um, uh, of the business cases, etc. So members were being asked to agree uh, the business cases in the recommendation of 2.1 for these three schemes. Are they agreed? Is that agreed? Thank you very much. Okay, that takes us on then to item seven, uh, establishment of a collaborative inward investment service. And, and Jed, you're going to take us through this, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, you remember that uh, at any meeting in September, uh, I Uh, as we 
Comments, questions on this paper, members? Anybody want to, to say? Yeah. Robert? Yeah, I, I think it, this was discussed at the chair, uh, but that board meeting uh, held in, in, in December, this, this paper. And I think, that, first of all, the board were very keen that this should happen, should happen swiftly. And it is a two-stage process, as you described there, Jay. But I think the, the feeling of the board was just to reflect this this morning, uh, just to convey this, uh, this, this thought to you. There was a, a, a clearly embedded intention that this should be a phase one or by phase two, and therefore it shouldn't be a question of dead stop after review. It was a desire to see both stages happen, and I just want to leave that for you. It is important to get to stage two. It shouldn't have been forced to let stop. It is an idea that this should be a journey that should continue right through, and that was the feeling of the board, of our net board, in December, just to convey that thought to this meeting today. Thanks, Robert. Um, oh, David, yes, please. If I may, yes, by the way, a brief comment the contribution. Um, this is something we were interested in. West um, I have a question. Um, in terms of contribution, can it be uh, assets in combined? Um, and uh, West Hampshire should be interested in an officer level, perhaps having some sort of form of it in a moment. I'm sure, I'm sure on the latter point that will be welcome, but Jack, can I ask you to come, to come back on this? Yeah, thanks, Chad. Uh, obviously, in terms of uh, the conversations and the so kind of uh, contributions and so on, very much welcome that we can pick that up and speak much about how you might be able to get to this particular stage of the process. In terms of the assets in plan, uh, we're all trying to assemble the most comprehensive product to offer the Lee City region and its neighboring areas can provide in a global context. So, Points about uh, product and offer and sites and premises and all those kind of things absolutely part of the portfolio. The, the, the reference to the resources in this report is look more on the staffing side in terms of making sure we've got enough capacity to be able to both push the message out in terms of what the city region and the neighbouring authorities have got available, but also hopefully to be able to convert those into activity on the ground through this kind of mechanism. So the resources point was more about the staffing side, but happy to be able to pick that up in that separate Okay, David, that answers the question. Um, any more points on this report? I mean, can I say, I mean, I, you know, I think we, we, we can welcome this report. I think this is a, a sort of tangible example of, of these um, local authority city region working collaboratively, which has got to be the way forward. Um, so I think um, in terms of the direction of travel, um, we, we should absolutely endorse this. I, I just want to um, suggest, because we're, we're all coming up to budget setting time, um, I think in terms of uh, recommendation C, it would be useful, Jed, just to have fleshed out at some point um, uh, you know, in the next few, few weeks the results kind of implications for, for all our authorities, because I think we need, need to know what they are um, so, so that we can take them back and, and hopefully get them, get them approved. So maybe if I can ask you to, to, to do a bit further work on that with the other chief ATX, um, that would be really helpful. Yeah, okay. Great. So members, can we approve those recommendations? They agreed? Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, and that then moves us on to item eight, the long-term uh, freight strategy. Um, and again, uh, Jed, you're going to take us through this report, please. Thank you again, Chair. Uh, this uh, dovetails to the uh, earlier overall contribution that Mike Palin made in terms of presentation and the emphasis on the involved freight logistics in terms of potential growth in the city region. Uh, it also mirrors uh, some of the uh, command authorities already approved, uh, which is uh, already well underway in terms of the detailed uh, developments of it in terms of the short term growth strategy, which kind of builds on the Liverpool 2 uh, growth potential links to the HS2 point that uh, the chair of that was making a bit two ago. Uh, what we have uh, suggested is that uh, as well as trying to sort out the short term issues, we really do need to be mapping out what the longer term kind of opportunities, but also constraints that will need to be managed around in order to achieve exactly that kind of growth we're looking for. And we recognise that the best way of doing that is through a study, the, the scope of which is uh, suggested here, and with the uh, active support of the government to travel, but financially uh, and in staff in terms, we're in a position to be able to take this forward. So I'm asking you to endorse that uh, outline in our scope, and uh, of course it will be brought back in more detail as these studies start to work out the way. What's the 
time scale? Okay. Uh, it's uh, partly dependent on uh, who's available to, to undertake the study. So, uh, but and our, our own capacity has to be able to actually initiate it. So, I think it's a matter of uh, maybe 12 months before it, six, six and a half, before it can be, be ready to be brought back to the details. Okay. okay, members, uh, any comments or, or questions on, on this report? We think this makes sense, Robert. Yeah, just to, I just build on what, uh, what Jen has been saying, and clearly this is about uh, playing to our strengths as a sector. We've had a huge strength, massive barriers of entry, and therefore an area which we're investing in, and therefore to see this report brought forward and behind this long term strategy is actually key and uh, like for our economic future. It's not just about custom market, it's about getting companies closer to the Attracting that investment, and it's about the of growth. It's not purely about that uh, question about uh, the air transport freight itself. It's, I think it's probably the most important opportunity to create new investment and new jobs. It's also important for the global England. We've heard before about the 90%, 10% uh, uh, margins around the, the importation of containers into, into the UK. <coughs> this is vital for the UK, not just for the city region. Also, for that wider Northern story, the Northern Powerhouse story. And it gives us in that context that seat at the table to press on our strengths in the context of that Northern Powerhouse, HS2 and HS3. So, for all those reasons, I think it's particularly important locally in terms of jobs and economic growth. And it gives us that presence, those arguments, the levers why HS2, HS3, if you can support, but more than that, how we can be the port for the North of England. And beyond that, to influence and bring forward that Northern Powerhouse story most effectively. So, I welcome this. I hope we can get a swift conclusion to this, and define the way forward, and invest accordingly, and get the funding from government to support it. Okay, thanks, Robert. Uh, any any other points on this report? So, are we content to agree this study and the recommendations in outlined by Jed in uh, section two? Are they agreed? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, that takes us then on to um, item nine, which is the Skills Capital Investment Fund, and <coughs> another important part of the growth deal that we managed to negotiate was a, a 41 million pound um, skills capital uh, pot. And um, Sue, Sue Jarvis, you're gonna take us through um, an update on this and how the fund is progressing. Thank you, Chair. Um, skills Capital Funding, uh, this was a 41, investment as part of the city region's growth deal. It was something that we asked for around 30 million in investment, but we were successful in securing 41 million. And the slide shows there are four strands how this funding will be allocated into sites and premises, improved facilities, equipment, and a low carbon fund. The, the low carbon fund is being worked up by specialists within the LEP, so there, there are not really any details of that in the paper today. That's something we'll bring back to you. To a future meeting. In terms of previous um, allocations of skills capital, this was done nationally by the Skills Funding Agency and primarily um, targeted at FE colleges. As part of this new process, uh, approved training providers will also be able to bid into the pot for this money, provided that they uh, comply with state aid. So it's a slightly different process we've got moving forward. Just got a few slides here just to give you a bit of a flavour of how the funding's been spent in the past. And across the city region, we have seven FE colleges, and they've received varying degrees of skills capital over the years. And we look back to 2001, and I think over the period since then, there's been almost 100 million skills capital grant that's been invested um, in, in our area. And just looking at the, the ones on there, the Hubert investment was around 2.8 million to improve some of the facilities. Um, a much bigger investment, 16.9 million, recently to the City of Liverpool for their, their college that has learning exchange, which provides a whole of learning facilities, cafe, resource centre, <coughs> sports facilities. And the bottom picture there is an artist impression what will be happening with Rural Metropolitan College, which is their new waterfront campus. This will be part of the enterprise zone and will be 
focusing on the construction skills required for where the waters is very much fitted into the economic needs of the area. It's very important that, that the skills capital investment is seen to be able to achieve the city region's wider growth ambition and to help applicants as part of this process we've developed perspectives and that's included within your papers at page 84. And what the prospectus will do is provide some sector specific information that comes from our city region, skills for growth agreements, and this will highlight the particular skills priorities that we're looking to support with this money. It will also focus on the growth sectors where um, we know there, there are key priorities coming up, but we'll also have a look at some of the high volume employment areas, such as care, for example, where we know that there will be job opportunities moving forward. There are other areas that are included within there that have come from employer demands linked to skills such as IT and leadership and management. So there's a range of areas that we're trying to target applicants to. Uh, good buildings and efficient estates are also part of the priority setting. And it will be important that those colleges and providers applying for this funding can demonstrate good quality of learning provision so we can support those that are already well. It will be a competitive process um, and as part of that there will be a benchmark of two to one co-investment. That is the desired intervention rate. We will be able to be flexible if there's a compelling case made as part of the bidding process. The governance arrangements for this will be important to get right and the funding as I've already said is part of the situation's growth deal so we'll be subject to the assurance framework in the same way that the transport projects that we've just heard about will be subject to an assurance framework that we've signed off with the government. What that means is we need to be able to demonstrate we have effective arrangements for the governance, for the value of the money, for the decision making. And given the nature of the employment and skills sector, we've got to make sure we avoid any potential conflicts of interest and so we'll have a clear split between the commission and, and the commission. And as part of that process, we're proposing to introduce a skills capital investment board that would have representatives from the combined authority of the LEP and the Employment and Skills Board considering bids from, from uh, <coughs> some providers. Anybody sitting on that board would obviously not be able to be a college governor or have a seat around the table as a private training provider. The next couple of slides, I just want to really give you a bit of a flavour of the sorts of schemes that we could be funding moving forward. Strand 1, 22.6 million, is targeted at sites and premises. Um, and we've got two elements <coughs> to this strand. One to cater for smaller innovative projects, and one to deal with larger scale new configurations or, or new builds that may come forward. And in terms of the types of potential projects, these could include an upgrade of science and technology laboratories, for example, engineering workshops, or they could support an expansion of provision <coughs> that's maybe targeted at emerging markets like Macau. It's very much growth orientated. Strand two is specifically about improving facilities, and it's important to know that this funding will be the only route for FE colleges who can access capital funding to improve their estate. So there's four million ring fence specifically for that. And it's important that we safeguard the current college estate that we've got across the city region. And just to give you a feel for the extent of that, currently the colleges are supported in the region of 45,000 learners across the city region. So it's important that we have a safe, efficient environment those and the sorts of projects here you'd be looking at are things around major items of maintenance for MP colleges and better utilisation of classrooms or community spaces for the benefit of the learners. Strand 3 is equipment and this will be open to both FE colleges and accredited private learning providers and this can support the updating of equipment provided that is meeting industry standards in, in the growth sectors also support the purchase of equipment to deliver the forms of training that's demanded by employers. A few things 
things just to draw your attention to that are in more detail within the report. Um, this is all capital funding, so we haven't got any revenue funding to support the design of the programme. However, there is some discussion action. We've been able to draw down a free opt-in offer from the Skills Funding Agency nationally, so there will be some support provided to us in terms of the technical and financial appraisal process for these bids and some supporting guidance document documentation for the paperwork. <coughs> in terms of the final decisions on any investments that go forward, they will sit with the combined authority of the left as part of the, the wider governance of the growth deal. And a few headline risks to draw members' attention to. Obviously, the delivery risk of getting this move in and, and getting the expenditures uh, spent in that two-year time frame that Got, that would have picked up as part of the, the wider growth deal. There are also legal and reputational risks, and the effect investment process needs to be seen as open and transparent. And our proposals for the separate skills capital investment board are a way of addressing this. And then program management will be an ongoing need with that to have a mix of professional services, legal, financial, and surveyors to be able to make sure that the right sorts of capital projects are being uh, delivered at the time. So just quickly in terms of the next steps, um, the strategy of the school scheme rules, we're intending to launch those at an event on the 4th of February that we were inviting FE colleges and learning providers to. That will allow the expression of interest window to go online from the 5th of February and we've got a six to eight week period um, for applications to be developed. But we recognise some bodies may be more advanced than others, so we're introducing a fast track process so applicants could actually submit a full bid at the same time as an expression of interest if they felt confident enough to do that. And we're looking to um, have a, once the EOIs have been returned and appraised, deadlines for full applications in August with projects starting either July for a fast track or from September onwards uh, if, if everything comes to time. So just just skip to other recommendations that was too quick. <coughs> Thank you very much, Sue, for that, um, for that uh, presentation, taking us through that report. Members, questions? Yes. Brothers? Just uh, going back to what you mentioned earlier, just to make sure that we're clear on fantastic progress, Sue, in a short space of time. This is a, a new field for us in many ways to enter into. And, uh, and it was a pleasing £41 million to be allocated. to be spent and invested very wisely, but the concept part so quickly to break credit to you. Secondly, I was pleased to see the balanced approach to what's proposed, both to investing in satisfactory current 